Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So today I want to have a discussion with you about saturation. I just got off some calls with some people and the topic of saturation came up. It seems to be quite a common topic as well that keeps cropping up at the moment. So I thought why not do a YouTube video where I can take you through my logical kind of understanding um, and show you how to identify the saturated areas of dropshipping and also how to avoid them. So today I'm going to be talking about whether dropshipping as a whole, as a business model is saturated. I'm going to show you how to kind of identify those products that are saturated so you know which ones to stay away from. And I'm also going to be talking about niche saturation as well. So if you put me on the spot and you said, Jack, is dropshipping saturated? Unfortunately, it's not as black and white as a yes and no answer. Ultimately, it depends. So let me explain. To fully label something as saturated, you must, this is unavoidable, unforgivable, you must understand four things. If you don't understand these four things about certain products, about certain niche, about dropshipping as a whole, then it's impossible to understand whether it is saturated. So number one is how many new people are coming into the market. This is very, very important because every new person that comes into the market will be looking to buy a certain item or buy a certain product. And if that's in a niche that you're in, they'll be interested in that product. Product. It doesn't matter how many people are advertising in a certain space, the second a new person comes into that market, then their purchase, their buy is essentially up for grabs and everybody's going to be competing for it. Number two is what is your market size and strength? If you are going to try and target a super niche down niche of bird watchers that love basketball and want infrared binoculars, something random like that. Obviously that's super, super specific. It's a tiny, tiny market, whether it even exists, you're probably not going to have much chance of success in something like that. Whereas if you're targeting a massive market, I'm going to show you the dog niche as an example, because that's typically the most popular one in the dropshipping space. I'm going to show you that market size is super important, but also how strong is the market as well. So we'll be talking, I'll show you some data and some numbers in a second. Number three, how much of the market it has been covered. I'm going to show you some different ways of identifying whether a product is saturated by looking at the number of advertisers and the more advertisers and the level of success of the current advertisers versus the size of the market. Again, I'll be showing you some different side by side comparisons. It will help you understand where the saturated areas are and how to avoid them. And then number four, how is the product being advertised? This is super, super important because you will succeed if you can do things better than everybody else. So if you see a product that is heavily advertised, but it's using recycled content from online, from suppliers, um, Chinese suppliers, whether that's AliExpress or other ones, if that's the only method of advertising people are using, there's definitely an opportunity there to go above and beyond that um, and outdo them and outperform them with better creatives and a better Shopify store. So that definitely comes into play as well, even in the most saturated of markets or products or niches. So just because a lot of people are selling the same product, it doesn't necessarily mean the product is saturated. However, there is kind of like a but. The more people selling the same products, the more difficult it is to become successful, of course. It's going to require a lot more work. So a brilliant, brilliant example I like to use is that if you want to know how difficult it is to sell a product or whether you have a high chance of success or not, uh, perhaps I'll do a video on this actually, is you need to ask yourself how replicatable is your business? And when I say your business, I mean your products. So how easy is it for other people to sell? I mean your Shopify store, how easy is it for somebody to create a Shopify store that looks very similar? I mean your supplier, can people deliver it as quick as you can? And then number four is your ad creatives. Can people replicate your ad creatives? And if all of those things are very easily replicatable, so you're selling their products that's on AliExpress that anybody can get hold of. Number two, of course, your Shopify store. If you're just using a default template and you're not really customizing it at all, then with somebody with my level of experience, certainly you could build a Shopify store probably in a couple of hours that looks exactly the same as yours. How can you expect to be successful at anything if somebody can beat you and do a better job than you in less than 24 hours work? It's just not, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't stack up like that, I'm afraid. Number three, supplier for using AliExpress and it's taken two to three weeks. 
Anybody else can use AliExpress suppliers, but do you have a supplier that's better than everybody else? Put yourself in the consumer's mind. If they are considering a few different companies or businesses to choose from, and they have somebody who can deliver it in a week, somebody who can deliver it in three weeks, who are they gonna go for? It's pretty obvious they're gonna go for the shorter delivery time. And then number four, obviously, add creatives. If you are just using recycled content, I can go to viral e-com ads, I can go to band off ads, and within 24 hours for less than $20, I can have an ad that looks exactly the same as yours. So within 24 hours spending less than $100, I can be the same as your business. You cannot expect to succeed if you are the same as everybody else and you are easily competed with. You have to go above and beyond past what most people are willing to do. And most people aren't willing to put in the extra hours or spend or invest that extra money into their business. So let's try and stay on track. It's going to require a lot more work. Perhaps I'll do like a live stream. I'll try and get a live stream once a week where I can just kind of talk you through things in a bit more detail. Perhaps that's the sort of thing you guys would like, who knows. Point number one then, how many new people are coming into the market? So we'll use the dog niche as an example. In the UK alone, 1 million dogs are adopted per year in the UK. 4 million dogs are adopted per year in the US. If you target both of these countries, that's 5 million dogs that have been adopted. And therefore that's 5 million dogs that need a dog collar, they need a dog bed, they need dog bowls, they need dog food, they need dog toys, they need dog treats, they need dog training, they need health, they need so many different things. And being a brand new dog that's been born, has been adopted, it needs all of those things. So there's an argument there to be made that there's potentially up to 5 million brand new customers every single year between these two countries. Now, obviously some of these dogs are gonna get adopted into homes that already have dogs. So they might share a dog bowl, might share a dog bed, but nonetheless, there's still opportunity there for certain products. And also when somebody adopts a new dog, there's that novelty and when somebody somebody is super excited and something's brand new and fresh, they wanna spoil it, they wanna buy it a brand new bed. They want to get it some new toys to play with so they're not using the old hand-me-downs. So there's definitely, definitely, definitely a lot of potential every single year. This is why the dog niche is brilliant as well, by the way, because there is so many new people coming into the market each year. And what it also means is that products that sell this year will sell well, next year will sell well the following year. That's why you see the same products kind of cropping up every single year. Number two, what's the market size and strength? So we use the cat and dog niche. And the UK size is approximately 10 million dogs in the UK and 11 million cats in the UK. In the US, there's 65 million households 65 million houses that have a dog. Most of them are gonna have a dog bed in. Most of them are gonna have dog bowls. Most of them are gonna have dog leads, dog collars, dog toys, dog food, dog treats. And 46 million households have cats. That is friggin' massive. <laughs> So the average dog owner spends approximately three grand per year. That's a lot of money. And the average cat owner spends, um, it was somewhere between sort of like a thousand and fifteen hundred. So I went for the lower end. It is a growing market every single year as well. So these things, by the way, they don't just apply to the dog and cat niche. Do your own research, spend, it took me like 10 or 15 minutes to find this information. Do your own research about your own niche, about your own products. So this is the US pet care market. We have the different colors. We have dog, cat, fish, bird, and others. We'll focus on dog and cat because they're the largest ones. And we'll go all, well, we'll start in 2020 and 2021 because there's specific numbers on there. Well, we can see number one, is it's predicted to carry on growing year on year. As the population increases, even if the percentage of dog owners stays the same, as the population increases, that means more and more dogs as well, as well as cats, of course. So if we go all the way back to 2020, 41 billion dogs was approximately half. So we can give or take, it's about $20 billion a year. $20 billion. If you think that you can't make just a few hundred grand in a $20 billion market industry, if I said that the right way around, then you're a bit naive. No matter how competitive it is, half a million pounds or a million dollars, sorry, half a million dollars or a million dollars is such a tiny, 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 tiny bite of that overall market that 
everybody with the right product and marketing strategy is capable of achieving that. Into three and four, so this is the difficult bit really. So how much of the market has been covered and how is the product currently being advertised? This is the difficult bit. So there's no, so with this, numbers don't lie, right? They're very black and white. However, with this, then you do kind of have, there's a bit of a gray area. You have to make your own judgment. So number one is just start looking. Do some searches across the different social media platforms for the product in question for the niche in question look at the views and the amount of advertisers and see if it's working now you can also check google trends so go into google trends in fact i can show you and you can search for a particular product so if we put in here dog bed just as an example united kingdom 2004 to present and we can see this clear kind of times of year where it spikes in popularity and ideally you want to get in near the bottom near kind of like may or june time for this particular search term because then you know more and more people are going to be buying this there's more and more interest around your products and it will be growing so that's how i use google trends super quick easy and free way and free method of doing that look at the views and amount of advertisers then so if you did want to consider dog beds and it was the right time of year go onto different social media platforms search for dog beds use the key terms like buy now or dog bed or today only those sorts of things to try and find the drop shipping ads you can use tools as well, of course, like Miner or Droppers Buy, um, Shop Hunter, those sorts of things to find the specific product or store selling certain products. And look at the amount of views that their ads have. If there's like half a dozen advertisers that all have 10 million plus views around your product, then obviously it's going to be quite difficult to kind of break into that and make a difference and outperform those guys. Whereas if you see maybe a couple of different advertisers between them, they only have, say, half a million views and they're in the dog niche where there's every single year around 5 million dogs being adopted and there's 65 million households half a million people even 5 million people seeing a particular ad about product that's not a lot of people in comparison to the overall market size so that would indicate there's definitely opportunity there as well look at the ad copy that they're using then are they all using similar recycled content from these cheap and cheerful ad creation softwares if they are and they're being successful using those sorts of things imagine how successful you can be if you use user generated content that's original that nobody has seen before it's going to spark a lot more interest versus the same clips on repeat that everybody else is using so just look and think when you see those creations ad creations um, is there room for improvement can you out do them can you do something better than them overall then here's the key takeaway from the video it's about making a judgment considering all of the things that i showed you in this video and deciding whether it's going to be worth your time or not if in doubt whatsoever even if there's the tiniest little bit of doubt just test it you know drop shipping is a amazing business model there isn't many business models out there that you can test to see if it's going to work before having to invest thousands of pounds with drop shipping for approximately 300 pounds three to four hundred pounds you will know if you have a business that can potentially make you hundreds of thousands of pounds if not millions if that initial test spending three four hundred quid goes really well when you see a return and you see a profit the more money you put in the business the better it should perform if you put it in the right places if you put it into your marketing if you put it into private labeling the product and it can grow into something that makes you a considerable amount of income for many many years to come on that note guys thanks for watching the video before you go though a very 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 quick message if you are interested in having somebody's help guide you through the saturation process or guide you from the very beginning so those four steps i showed you in the beginning i can help you find a product i can help you build a shopify store i can introduce you to the agent i use in china and i can help you launch your business to 10k and beyond if you are looking for a mentor somebody to hold your hand through the entire process then what you need to do is jump on a call with me and let's have a chat about how i can help you to do that what you need to do is go below this video and check out this mentorship link this hidden call link if you click that it's going to take you to this page here
So what this page is essentially is a series of six or seven questions. It only takes three or four minutes to fill out. It's super quick. It's more of like a gateway, a barrier to keep the time wasters away. I only want to be working with those people who are super serious and fully committed to this. So there's a couple of questions in there like, what's your current level of experience? What do you want me to help you achieve? What your goals are, that sort of thing. So it lets me know kind of where you're at now and where you want to get to. And if it's realistic and I feel like I can help you get there, then you'll get through to my calendar where you can book a time and date for us to jump on a call and have a chat. I'll see you there. Thanks.